Today we're going to be learning about the real number system and how to classify numbers. Please get out your notes outline and take notes as we go through this. Feel free to pause, stop, and rewind at any time and be prepared to answer some follow-up questions. So if you ever wonder where numbers originated, the first numbers that existed were natural numbers. Those were the numbers that we use for counting. So the Sumerian counting system was the first number system known of, invented in 2500 BC. They needed these numbers to say, hey, how many cattle am I going to trade for you, to you? Just items like that when they're trying to deal with them. One, two, three, four. So you learned how to count probably when you were a toddler and have been using that ever since. Now, this was not actually next, but the next group of numbers we've come up with is whole numbers. Whole numbers are counting numbers, but they also include zero. It absolutely amazes me that zero was not invented until around 650 AD in India. That's 3,000 years later than counting numbers originated. So the only distinction between a whole number and a counting number is zero. So this idea of nothingness, we need this value of zero because that's going to help us make sense of numbers. This unit, we primarily study integers. And integers, they include all whole numbers, but they also include their opposite. So negative numbers are included here too. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. These are all some of the integers that we encounter. So positive and negative numbers, as long as they are whole numbers or their opposites. Um, negative numbers were invented about at the same time as 0, actually in India, again, by the same guy. Um, and they were to show debt, so you owe me something. The next type of number is a rational number. Now, rational numbers were actually invented before zero and before negative numbers, but rational numbers also include some fractions and decimals. Any number that can be written as a ratio of two integers as a fraction, it's called a rational number. Uh, so that originated all the way back in 1800 BC in Babylon. So I'm going to say, how can we divide one cake among four people? We each only get a part of something. We need this idea of fractions, not just counting numbers. Special thing to note is every single decimal that can be written terminating, which means it ends, or a repeating, like 7.61616161, that can be written as a fraction. And here are some examples. 0 0.3, 3 fourths, negative 6, 7.2222. These are all rational numbers. Irrational numbers are the final type of number we're going to look at today. And these are numbers that cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. If you can't write this number as a fraction, integer over integer, then we call it irrational. So decimals that never terminate or repeat, they cannot be written as a fraction. These even got invented before zero, crazily. But around 550 BC, Greek philosophers realized, hey, a diagonal length of a unit square can't be written as a ratio of two integers. And they were able to prove this and said, oh, no, OK, I guess we need this new type of number we didn't know existed, irrational numbers going to take a look at a Venn diagram that kind of puts all of these ideas together. You can see that rational numbers and irrational numbers are two totally different sets of numbers. If a number is rational, it cannot be irrational. If a number is irrational, it can't be rational. But if something is a natural number, like 1, 2, or 3, it's also a whole number, and it's also an integer, and it's also a rational number. So I want you to answer a couple questions for me. Just think about this. How about the number negative 17? What would that classify as? If you said it would be an integer and also a rational number, you're correct. We'll look at a few more of these examples as we go, and thanks for taking the time to learn about classifying numbers with me.